How's it going everyone? So today we're going to be talking about how to install a little USB port charger uh, in your door on a Ram truck. Now this should be applicable to just about any vehicle, uh, but I'm going to be using the 2500 because that's what I've got. And if you follow this guide for other vehicles, you could probably pull it off as well. On many Ram vehicles, there's no uh, USB chargers or cigarette lighter outlets in the back seat. Um, of course, that makes it kind of a pain in the butt because if you've got people in the back seat, uh, kids, dogs, adults, whatever, somebody using a tablet, uh, their phones and that kind of thing, and they need to be able to charge it, you have to plug in up at the very front. Now, of course, that's not a huge deal because you have several, you probably have one or two in the center console as well as some up on the dash, but that means you're running cords from the very front to the back. And I know before, for us anyway, we end up snagging them, pulling them out, uh, or things aren't charging as well as they should because the cord is, you know, ends up being too long. So this is going to be a great solution uh, to add into the back to make sure that everybody can power their devices that they need to. Now there's a lot of different locations in the back that you can use. There's kind of the front center area where the little vents are. Uh, I don't personally like that because I feel like if you've got kids, dogs or whatever, and people are going back and forth, there's a high likelihood that a cord is gonna get snagged and pulled on. Um, so because of that, I switched over and I started looking at installing on the door. Now on the door card itself, you have a lot of different options. Uh, you can install it up by the front window switch is where I'm going to be installing mine. Uh, you can also put it on the side here. Now I have the peasant version, uh, the tradesman. So I don't have a fancy door card, so many of you might have an extra little pocket right here as well as this bottom pocket. However, I don't. I just have the bottom one. Um, so I'm, you know, I've seen it installed here before, but I like it up on the top here. It makes it really easy to access. Um, and on top of that, if you put it here on the side, um, if you're opening or closing the door, it could be poking somebody in the leg or something like that. Not a big deal, but could be inconvenient. Uh, and also, if you have a pocket right down here, it could be a little bit more difficult for adults to try to see in there and make sure you're plugging things in properly. Uh, so having it on the top here makes it really easy and accessible, so that way you can plug in uh, whenever you need to, of course, and it's not getting snagged or caught on anything if you're opening and closing the doors. So we're going to go over, of course, basically how to install this and get it set up and working. Now, parts that you're gonna need for this are pretty simple. Um, you're gonna need a USB outlet uh, that you can find on Amazon or of course locally as well. Now, you could also use a regular cigarette lighter. Uh, however, since most devices that you're gonna be plugging in use USB, it makes a lot of sense just to use one of these. Um, on top of that, you should probably wanna pick up a drill bit to make sure that you can drill a hole properly for this. Um, for years, I'd done trying to like cut a biggest hole I can with a drill and then try to use the box cutter or uh, Dremel to make the hole bigger, but just getting the, the proper drill bit makes it a lot easier. So that way you can just drill a hole uh, and be done with it and have it nice, simple and, and perfectly round, of course. Now you also need a Torx bit to get the actual door piece off itself. And the other thing that I suggest having is a multimeter so that way you can check the voltages on the door because in order to make sure that you're installing it properly, you have to make sure you hook it up to the proper wires. So that'll of course ensure that you're able to find the correct wires that you should be plugging into. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started and pull off this door panel. All right, so first things first, you're gonna wanna take this piece off. Now it is very simple. You just kind of pull and you should be able to get that off no problem, just like so. The next thing you wanna do is remove the window switch. And if you get a small tool or a screwdriver, you should be able to pry just up under the edge and get that out. And then of course, you're gonna go ahead and undo the connector. Now the next part of this is going to be removing the Torx T15 screws. Now there are several of them around the edge of the door, so go ahead and use that and just unscrew those. Once you remove the screw, you can then use your little pry tab to get the remaining piece out. Now some Torx screws can be a little bit stripped out, so when you're trying to unscrew them, they don't unscrew. So all you have to do is use a little box cutter and I try to get up underneath kind of the little edge there. And once you start unscrewing, you can start pulling up just a little bit and that should help get it started. Once you get those started, you can then go around the rest of the door and unscrew the rest. Now, one of the last things we need to do before removing the door panel is go ahead and pop this little cover off and you'll find a screw beneath that. And you can go ahead and just unscrew that. Once that screw is removed, go ahead and grab your pry tool again, and we're gonna pop this little cover off that goes around the door handle. Now, the only thing you need to do from here is go ahead and take your door panel, slide it up and over your little door lock here, and you'll be able to take the whole thing off. 
Now you can do this in a different order of course, but the first thing I wanna do is figure out which wires I need to plug into for my USB plug. Um, so to do so, I'm gonna take a look at the window switch what we, which we have right here. Now the first thing we can see is that there's six wires going into this. Um, and then here's the window motor and that's technically the power that we're tapping into. So looking at these, I've got brown with blue and brown with yellow. And I can find that here on this tab. Now, because it's going to the motor, that means I'm only gonna have power there when I hit the window switch, which is not what I want. I want power always, uh, as long as the truck is on. I'm probably gonna be looking for this gray wire and let's see, maybe this orange with the purple stripe. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll turn my truck into accessory mode so that way I have power so I can roll the window up and down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my multimeter to test those wires to figure out when I have power uh, and when I don't. So we can see we've got our meter right here and I'm gonna go ahead and try uh, to see what happens if I'm using this gray wire and the purple and the orange. There we go, we can see that we have power there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is shut off the truck and see if I lose power at these wires. And if I still have power, of course, and I found the constant wire, which is not what I want, I want a switched one with the ignition. So I've now turned the truck off. So now let me try plugging into these wires again and see if I have power. All right, so now I'm tapped into those same exact wires and you can see on there that I have no power, which means I've now found my switched wire power uh, that I'll be using for the USB plug. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap this so that way I have access to these wires and I can tap into it with my own. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and add my extension wire on here, and this will be the one that actually plugs into the USB charger. Um, and so for this one, it has two little connectors on the end that I can crimp. Now you can also solder it directly to the USB. Uh, however, I suggest using the little crimps on here, so that way if you need to re remove the door panel or something, you can do so and just unplug it, no problem. Now you can use whatever method you want for attaching your new wiring into uh, your harness here. I suggest soldering. It's a much better connection than using uh, taps, which try to you know pinch into the wire here and give you a connection. Um, they just don't seem to be all that reliable and I've never been a fan of them at all uh, because of some reliability issues that I've seen. Now, of course your truck may vary, but I'm gonna be using this gray wire here and also this bottom one in the corner, the orange with the purple stripe. Now, if you guys don't already have one of these stripper tools, I highly recommend it. They work really well. Uh, they auto adjust to different wire sizes and they just work phenomenally. Um, and it's a whole lot better than trying to use a box cutter or um, you know, wire cutters or something to try to get that outer sleeve off. Once you have everything soldered up and properly covered with electrical tape or shrink wrap, go ahead and put your little harness back together and retape that so that we've got your harness that's protected by the little cover along with your new power wire sticking out of that. When you're all finished, it should look something like this. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out where we're gonna actually be placing the USB plug. Now I mentioned earlier, I'm putting mine right here. Um, you're of course free to put it anywhere, but really make sure that you're checking the depth of this because this of course sticks back and behind the door panel. So make sure that it's not gonna interfere with anywhere uh, on the door because obviously that'll be troublesome if you drill a hole and then you find out that this is blocking something that it shouldn't be. Um, so at least for my particular vehicle, right here seems like a pretty good spot. Uh, it's easy to access and uh, of course it stays pretty well protected and I don't have anything right there below it that I need to worry about. Now here's the drill uh, bit that I was talking about and with this you'll make sure that the hole is perfectly round and exactly where you want it to be. Perfect. Once you do that you can go ahead and take your USB thing, drop it in the hole and thread the uh, little lock onto the back. So the next thing that we need to do now that we've got our USB port installed is we're gonna go and put the door panel back on. Um, first, you need to plug in, of course, power on the very bottom underneath. Now make sure that you're connecting it to the proper plug. So obviously red goes to positive and black goes to negative or whatever combination, of course, that you have done, um, regardless of your wiring to make sure that when you turn your truck on that this gets power. Now, one thing that you can do at this point is you can test it to make sure that all of your wiring is working uh, before you put the door panel back on just to make sure that it's working. 
Now, when you're putting your door panel back on, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. One, you don't want to pinch any of your new wiring. Secondly, there's a the plug on the very back, uh, and that's the one that goes to the window switch. Make sure that's poking out of the hole here. And then the last thing that you want to keep in mind is the door lock. So make sure that that is in the proper hole on the door. Um, once you get that set up, you can kind of place the door up a little bit high and it should drop down. Now you won't have to force it. You won't have to pop anything into place. It should fit perfectly. So if it doesn't, just kind of try to readjust it a little bit until you get it to kind of drop into place. And uh, from there, we just add the screws and we're basically done. Now, once you get it in place, you can kind of pull on it a little bit here and there just to make sure that all the little tabs in the very back are dropped into the slots that they should be. Now, once you're sure everything's functioning and uh, you're ready to start putting everything back, go ahead and pop your plastic pieces back in, add the screws as well as the remaining outside door screws. And don't forget when you're adding this front pocket, it slides up kind of like this and there's two little tabs in the very back that have to slide in first and then the whole thing will pop in and then you can add your screw. Now, when it comes to the outside door screws, go ahead and just pop your center piece in. Once that locks in, then you can go ahead and use your torque screws and put those in. And the last thing you need to do, of course, is get that last little trim piece and pop it right back on. Perfect. So at this point, you should now be fully complete with installing the USB port in the very back of your truck. Of course, you can do the same thing on the other side of your truck. I know I have. Uh, it makes it really easy, of course, if you've got multiple passengers in the back because everybody now has their own USB port that they can use. Now, of course, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those down below. And uh, good luck to everybody, of course. Make sure you take your time when you're doing this. It's a very simple and quick uh, you know, installation. It should only take you maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Um, but of course, if you get any hangups or anything, comment down below. And of course, all the parts and pieces and tools that you're going to need are going to be down here in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.